in our guest. Um, my man, Nick Swatwala. What's going on, brother? How you doing? How's everything going? Primetime pop, baby. It's great to hear from you. Obviously, there's a lot circulating right now. Some, some, some time to play with before the Super Bowl. So it's good with the NBA. It's good with the college hoops. Good with the drama with Watson. I can't wait for it, pop. I can't. All right, so let's go ahead. We're gonna start. We're gonna start off first before we go to break. Let's get into the Texans' brand new coach, Dave Cully. What are your thoughts on the hire? I mean, it's obviously a horrendous hire. The guy was not going to be in play for any type of head coaching job, and not only this off season, but probably the following, and probably the one. You know, as far as Cully goes specifically, two notes before I get into the the big picture. Number one. It's a damn good thing the Texans hired a black coach because there was probably going to be riots or a revolt, and and they needed to hire a black coach. Uh, they just needed to. And I thought it was going to be Frazier. Um, I, I, at the end of the day, I understand why it wasn't uh, the enemy uh, for a reason I'll get to for my main point. But the bottom line is, is it's, it's good that they hired a, a black coach. That's number one, because there would have been outrage um, if they hired this, you know, Josh McCown, who, oh, by the way, might be a great head coach down the road. But Josh McCown, I mean, he, he's just getting off the sideline. That would have not that would not have been a good look at all for the NFL if they would have went forward with McCown. So uh, from that standpoint, that's an important note based on the conversation circulating around the he, uh, head coaching search. Secondly, Coley has no business getting this job. The reason why he got this job is because no one else wants it. When the Lions fans bitch about the uh, Detroit not hiring Robert Sala and they bring in a Dan Campbell for a six-year deal, no one's ever heard of him. Uh, aside from, you know, people that like myself watch my Jets and Joe Philbin's head coaching career in London and then came Campbell for that interim stretch. Besides that, no one's ever heard of the guy. Um, the reason why the Lions are making the hire like that, the reason why Collins, who somehow gets a look over Wink Martindale on his own team, I don't understand that at all. But the reason why these two teams are making two horrendous, uh, unpopular, uninspiring hires is because they're two brutal jobs. And the Lions job is bad. But the Texans job, it's really bad because he knew what he, he was walking into. I firmly believe Salah wanted nothing to do with it. I firmly believe Bien. You know, people talk about Bien not getting the job. I haven't heard one reporter ask him if he wanted the job. And I have a, I think Bien is smart enough to not take that job. It's a mess. Watson's going to be out the door. I think there's a couple of teams in play. And in the end, the Texans organization picked this goofball Jack Easterby over Deshaun Watson. It's You can't explain it. Well, and you know what the hire really reminds me of? This reminds me of Al Davis in the later years. And when he went ahead and he couldn't find a head coach, nobody went to work for the Raiders at the time. He went back into the well and he went and got Art Shell yep. of all coaches. Art Shell was the first black head coach, all that great stuff. But by this time, Art Shell had aged aged in the NFL. He's pretty much a dinosaur in the league. You know what I mean? So pretty much the Raiders go ahead and muscle out, I think, maybe one to two wins that season. And I think what they're doing here is having a stopgap coach in a last second ditch effort to try to keep um, Watson here. So pretty much that's going to be our topic at hand when we get back. And we're going to talk about all the head coaches and the hires as well, too. So you guys stay tuned. We will be right back with the premier sports betting show, the primetime angles with the one and only pop DBIC, the primetime capper and my main man, Nick Satwala. And we'll be right back. The Vigit app, where social media meets sports betting. Get the latest line movements in all major sports. Track your daily bets, daily contests, the NFL over-under contest that pays out 10 k in cash prizes. This is a cutting-edge app that helps betting be easy. Sign up with the reference code POPDBIC and you will be able to watch my daily show, The Primetime Angles, as a resource to building that bankroll. Vigit is available in your Apple or Google Store, in your iOS or Android. The social sports betting app, Vigit. Good news only racing club led by the legendary Doug O'Neill, the trainer of two Kentucky Derby winners and I'll have another in Nyquist. Also trained two-time Breeders' Cup champ Golden Sense, who are just a part of a long list of thoroughbred champions trained by Doug O'Neill. The good news only racing club has a young core of horses to look out for in Dennis's Celery, Irish Heatwave, and Notre Dame, just to name a few. Win the day every day with the good news only racing club, a proud sponsor of the NFL Bet Exchange. All right, we're back, and uh, pretty much it is what it is. 
I got Nick Sequala here with me. And um, this is the premier sports betting show with the one and only Pop DiBiase, the primetime capper. And boy, oh boy, I'm telling you right now, this is going to be a funny offseason. And there's going to be a lot of coaches that are going to have to start from scratch. So pretty much, let's go ahead and get into Deshaun first, though. Deshaun, I think he's making a monster, monster mistake right now. He has to go ahead and tell himself, yep. okay, Bill O'Brien made some bad mistakes. Mm -hmm. I committed to this team. So this is my team at the end of the day. Okay. But pretty much, J.J. Watt spoke up for me and got Bill, Bill O'Brien out of here. Okay? All right, we get Bill O'Brien out of here. Now, I've signed off on this contract. This team forever believed in me. They did not have to hand me this contract after tearing my ACL my rookie season. Even though he lights out, you're stellar, you're doing all those good things. But when you compare his numbers to Dak's numbers, Dak didn't even get paid. And Dak, you know, Dak is in a different situation where he should have been, Dak should, should have been secured, but he's not. So pretty much they secured Deshaun Watson with the idea that we're going to be have you as our as another one of our Aaron Rodgers, a Peyton Manning type. So you just go with the flow and we'll see what we can do for you. But you're just going to have to give us some time to recreate this thing a little bit. So pretty much that's my thoughts on it with that. I know a lot of people want to say free Watson, all that good stuff. But to me, at the end of the day, this has to be another situation where we got an NFL player acting as if he can do the same thing as an NBA player. So that's pretty much my two cents on, on that right there with him wanting to be traded and everything like that. And I understand now they're giving you a coach that really wants to get you out. Now you really want to get out of there, but they brought this coach in to talk to him and try to save this uh, relationship. Your thoughts, Nick? Well, the co I, I don't think the coach, I mean, look, I, I think it was done. I think he's been out the door before the coach got hired. I think, well, first of all, there's 15 to 20 players in the uh, in the league, in my opinion, uh, most of them at the quarterback position that can pull off what you see in the NBA. And I think you're going to see that going forward. Um, and, and ultimately, I don't blame Watson for this, and I don't think he's making a mistake because although people can crack the jokes and say, well, why would he go to an organization like the Jets? Or why would he go to an organization like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not about that. It's about what happened uh, in the last several months. And what happened is while I don't think the show, you know, if I'm running a team, I'm not letting these players come in and tell me what to do. That's not how this is working. And I don't think that's how Watson wants it perceived to be. The bottom line is he wasn't consulted with. And when you have one of those top 15, top 20, you know, there's stars, superstars. And then you have those 15 to 20 super duper stars. Watson's one of those players. You have to keep the guy in the loop. You have to keep the guy in the loop and, and allow him to share his thoughts. And you have to basically prove that you're a franchise that understands how to handle a superstar. The ego, you know, sometimes I blame the ego. Sometimes I don't. In this case, I'm, I'll blame. I'll, don't get me started on Harden. But, you know, in this case, I understand where Watson's coming from completely. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious. In fact, I've seen an example of it myself. Why do you ask? Simple. Did you see how Mike McCagden handled Jamal Adams? You're looking at a Jet fan here. I've seen this. When a franchise doesn't handle a superstar, albeit apples and oranges, as far as why, you know, he wanted out. But as far as Watson goes, I don't think he's making a mistake. I think the Texans, if you do, if you look up what has transpired in that Texans facility, in that organization in the last three years, you know, it makes the Lions, the Jets, and the Bengals look functional. That's how bad it is. And that's, and basically, like I said, choosing essentially, Jack Easterby over to Sean Watson is a critical mistake. And while I don't think a player should run a team, I think they should be able to go in the double doors, have a seat with everybody and be in the loop. They did not keep him in the loop. I like Calisario, the GM hire, uh, the head coaching hire. I already explained it. The reason why they end up with, with that hire and it's a bad hire. Uh, it's a, it's a $1 lottery ticket uh, is because it's a horrendous job. And Watson's been out the door. Well, I hey, I'm with you on that, but see me as an owner GM taking him on. I know what risk I'm taking on now. If we fail, yeah. are you going to want to leave my place as well too? That's that's what I'm thinking about now as it's well. It's fair. Too. Look, it's fair. I think right. that's fair. I think that, yeah. but, but I think it, I think it's based on circumstance. I do. I just because I honestly feel that Deshaun, great player, and he 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 he's earned the right 
to play exactly where he wants to play. But when you put those no trade clauses into your contract, you're committing to that team. You're telling this team that I'm with you in the long run. So if if, if things go wrong, if the if the dookie hits the fan, mm-hmm. then I'm gonna be right here with you. And I don't I, the loyalty is just it, the I, and I know teams aren't loyal to players, but when you sign off on that no trade, you said that I'm gonna be committed to anything that goes down over here. But I think though, at the end of the day, they would have been able to maybe save it if they were able to bring in the right coach. But I know they didn't bring in this coach simply because at the end of the day, we both know, and I'm going to get let you get to your point about the enemy as well, too. We all both know that Eric B enemy is right now saving himself for that chief's job. There's no guarantees. Andy Reed comes back next year. If he goes back to back, Andy Reed is, 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 is accomplished yeah. coach in the NFL. He doesn't really, what, what more would he be? What more would he be coaching for? He's already set this team up. I mean, well, I, that's where I would stop you. I think there's some things still to coach for for Reed. I think there's that top tier of uh, not only co- – you're talking about a dynasty that's just now really, you know, D Ford lining, lining up on the on the wrong side of the line of scrimmage in the AFC Championship game. Um, by the way, it was probably my biggest gambling loss of my life. Um, since then, the dynasty's been born. The dynasty has been born, and this is something that could go on. You know, they have cheap years of Mahomes. It's going to be a couple of years before the cap really gets complicated. I think Reed's going to stick. I don't know Reed. Haven't interviewed him. Haven't read much about his future. Um, and you could be right. All I'm saying is that there is something for him to coach for. I do believe that because you're talking about Reed all of a sudden with a, maybe a championship this year with Mahomes in his back pocket. I mean, come on. I, you're talking about him maybe maybe climbing up that list, right up that list. Right, right below Lombardi. You know, there's that Lombardi. There's the Belichick. There's the Shula. There's that collection of coaches. Reed's not there yet. He could. Right, but you know when you get that second one, and you've been in the game as long as Andy Reed has, and the the sacrifices Andy Reed has made right. over the years. First, yeah, it's a personal. You know, I mean, at some point in time, he knows that he has to think about wrapping it up. Belichick has lost everything. Look at Belichick's life right now. His kids are grown. Yeah, his wife left him. Now he got his girlfriend and a dog. You know what I mean? So <laughs> that's been hanging out in the NFL too long. You know what I mean? And we don't want to get too into personal issues like with Andy. We know what happened with the son passing away. Right. He was still coaching in Philadelphia. He had to go ahead and take a year. He, and it took him two to three years to take a year off from that. So pretty much he's been coaching nonstop. And that's yeah. just my whole thing. And I just feel like Andy, I, w- I would feel like he's at the top of the mountain. He might want to just hand it over to the enemy. But you have a great point as well, too. Why would you want to lead something that's going so yeah. great? He loves coaching. I think, the B- look, the enemy thing could be a good thought to the point where uh, wh- why I think enemy might be kind of turning his head on some of these jobs. I also think enemy could be turning his head on some of these jobs. And by I really only mean two, let's be honest. And maybe three, because Philadelphia – uh, the thing that people are they're, they're going outraged over the Philly hire, you have to understand, the Philly hire was specifically only about saving Wentz. And Frank Reich picked up the phone, 